Hi viewers, welcome. I'm Greg Gunter, your dream pro realtor here in San Miguel de Allende, Central Mexico. Number one city in the world, voted five times, five separate years by Connie Ness Traveler. Man, it's a great lifestyle down here. You gotta come visit. So if you've watched a few of my videos before, you probably know that I'm also an architect, in addition to being a broker, of course. And so I'm always a little bit frustrated when I, I work with clients and they go, wow, this house is phenomenal. You know, they looked at 20 houses, they narrowed it down to two or three and they go, this house is phenomenal. It's got good bones, right? Good bones makeover. That's the name of the little series. Great bones, good location. The lights phenomenal. Many features that they love about the house, but then they say, you know, it just looks too American for us. If, if we'd want that, we'd stay in the States. And I'm always, trying to tell them that's what that profession called architecture is for. Someone can help you design it to make it look whatever you want. You want a home that looks more Mexican? Easy to do. You can do like the Getty uh, penthouse in Rome, for instance. Their place is all B Balinese, and it was in Rome, for crying out loud. So we're in a home today that turned from a very American-looking, even though it's in San Miguel de Allende, Mexico, it looked like a very American condo that got converted to a Florentine Pieta there. So we're going to look at before and after so you can see what could be done to the home of your dreams to make it fit your style more perfectly. Come join me. Good Bones Makeover. viewers welcome back to today's version of good bones makeover now as you saw in the opening credits today we're taking a look at the kitchen whole new kitchen phenomenal difference in the kitchen well the living room was too if you already saw the living room video for instance great new kitchen now we're going to switch to where you can see the before photo you're taking a look at the exact same shot that we're seeing here now it had a tiny little portable island that was really quite unattractive something that looked like it came from walmart to be honest with you and as we work around this way, I'm going to work over toward the, to the, uh, the range area, and you'll see the old photo from the before shot as well. This is where the same range was, actually. But as you see, there was nothing above it, no hood, no cabinetry, very, very basic. It had the old granite countertop, which is very out of, out of date, out of style now. That's all been completely changed. Now, here I am back in the brand new kitchen. You see that we actually have a, a full-sized island now. We have a real island that has a couple of the antique European bar stools. This island was built to recreate a French chopping block. So it looks like the old antique chopping blocks, but it's made to current spe specific dimensions. You know, we wanted it to fit specifically in this room. It's got storage over on this side, all wood. You top it off with an antique European scale so it looks very European and we kind of work our way around. We've got some very elegant lighting. They look much more European than what was here before. There was actually nothing here before. It was just a little pendant light. We've got marble for the countertops. Now that's kind of a new design technique. A lot of people think you have to have granite. You, you can be uh, you know, very conservative with your, with your marble. You need to kind of make sure that you don't let red wine sit on it for very long, for instance, because it might stain it. But marble is a great, very European looking style. So if you're looking for something that's very European, marble is a, a great feature. This particular marble, as we'll see here, you can kind of see a close up. The veining has a lot of gold in it. And that matches the gold um, faucets that you see over here. Those are all a champagne gold faucet from Kohler, for instance. So that's kind of a new and popular color that gets reflected in the marble. We have a black sink that sort of reflects the black backwash. You see the backsplash here is all meant to recreate an old chalkboard. All the little sayings here are in Italian because remember, this is a Florentine Pieta there, even though we're in San Miguel de Allende. So this is one of the cool sayings in this particular one. You can see this is a tiny kitchen, right? But one of the more famous sayings that comes from Italy says, la cucina piccola fa la casa grande. That means the small kitchen makes a big house. That's because everyone loves to gather in the kitchen, right? That's where everybody, all the activity is. So this truly is a small kitchen, but it makes for a grand house. Now we work our way around. You saw this from the living room shot, if you saw, but we have our kava columns here. So there's no wine cellar. This is a condo, right? So we don't have room for a wine cellar. But what we have here are our kava columns, the white and rosé and the red on this side. So the wine is handy for, uh, for dinner parties when you're entertaining for dinner parties. 
We have a little uh, entryway here. I always have lots of flowers in the entryway. We always have some uh, girasoles, as they say, some sunflowers here, again, to make it look very Florentine, very Italian looking. And as we work our way around, you saw in the old photo, this was all open cabinetry. Now, what we've done here to kind of hide everything away, make a little bit more of a pantry space, make what we call a garage, appli uh, an appliance garage, excuse me, an appliance garage. This particular case is one where we open and the door slides back in and all of your storage and all of your appliances are back in here. So this works very well as a appliance garage. You can pull the coffee maker and the uh, air dryer and the uh, microwave, everything's kind of tucked away. So that's another really nice design feature that you can hide all the working space away and all the storage space. You see that it's been put behind an antique mirror door. Again, that's something that picks up the light, picks up the space, makes it look bigger, also makes it look more authentically old, right? The old mirror look. So you see it's a whole new kitchen that we have here. We haven't changed any of the appliances. They're the same appliances, but look at how different the kitchen looks. Much more European, much more functional, much more interesting. It's a place you'd like to come and have an Italian meal, right? Hi team, it's dusk and we're back in the kitchen. Now, if you watched the living room video just a little while ago, we uh, had a dinner party set up. So now we're in the kitchen preparing for that dinner party. Well, I'm preparing, <laughs> Brindemos. <laughs> For the dinner party, again, we're showing the lighting, the different levels of lighting. Remember I said lighting is critical. When you're redesigning a home, redoing a home, architecture is super important, but the lighting is really critical. You want to have the best lighting you can and various levels of lighting. I always like to do task, ambient, and mood lighting. So we're standing here in the kitchen under the island. You could call this almost task lighting because when you work at the kitchen, you need the extra lighting here, right? However, if I turn this off when I'm just doing the mood lighting, you see the lighting up at the top? So that creates a great mood light. Now, if you want a little bit more ambient light, we turn this one on. And you'll see that the cabinets light on the inside and it, light it lights up my Solivari cartouche. By the way, we didn't talk about this during the day shot, but this is the cartouche that I designed with a craftsman in Florence. I designed the armorial bearings and the cartouche and had a, an artist paint it here. So this is recreating the Solivari that you saw the name outside, Via Solivari. This is where the Solivari comes from. This is the cartouche. You see I've got a spotlight on it so when we have company over for a dinner party like this, we can turn the light on specifically for that. Okay, but you're going to say, well, listen, I'm ready to chop and dop and slice and dice vegetables and, you know, get, get cooking. I can't see. What do you do? Then you've got to have your task lighting. So there's your task lighting. Now, if the cameraman can show, the floor lights up down here as well. So you not only have the under cabinet lighting here that shows up, but you've got the floor lighting as well down in the toe kick. Now, of course, you're going to have this light back on here to be able to work in the kitchen. This you saw earlier in the day is a workspace. So when you're working over here, you can turn this light on and get a little bit more light over in here. So you see all the different very levels of light that we have, whether you're working, you just want some mood lighting, or you want a little bit more ambient lighting. Very critical to make sure your lighting is very important in all rooms of the house. I hope you love that tour of the lighting. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for today's session of Good Bones Makeover. Hope you love the kitchen. Come join me for the next session.